Hey folks, Wes Boss here. Um, I'm in the middle of recording a course here and um, I just can't stop thinking about this. So I thought I'd stop and, and maybe try to record a video on this. So I was on this website the other day, Tour City Merch, and this is a company that used to do merch for some of my favorite bands when, I don't know, like 10 years ago. Like if you look at the copyright in the bottom, 2006, right? Like even more than that. And, and this website, I was kind of just hovering over top of the nav items here. And I was like, huh, those feel like images. Like this feels like a website that was built a long time ago. So I cracked it open and uh, I saw, yeah, of course they, they are images. And, and when you hover over top of them, the images change. Uh, and I saw this, the MM underscore swap image restore. And if you've been a web developer for, I don't know, uh, like uh, more than 10 years, you know that that stands for Macromedia, uh, which was the sort of the built-in JavaScript uh, for building websites with Dreamweaver uh, a long time ago. Um, and, and that MM stands for Macromedia, which is before Dreamweaver bought uh, like it was Macromedia, then then Adobe bought it and, and merged it into Dreamweaver. So this is a relic of of the past. So no shade thrown on this website at all. I'm just curious. Like I, I thought about it and I close it down and I just keep thinking about this. Like oh, I wonder like what is the JavaScript behind this? Obviously we could all write some JavaScript that switches out uh, a PNG, but like what does the JavaScript actually look like? So. Uh, let's take a crack, open this swap image and try break down. What is it actually doing behind the scenes? Um, and then we can take a look at this image restore as well. So MM swap image, um, it's just on, it's just done on an inline event handler. So that means it's likely uh, a global variable. Let's take a look here. Yeah. So if you type in MM swap image, you get the code who is version three, uh, you click through to that and you'll get to see it's it's just in the index of HTML. So this is the code for the swap image. So let's just paste that in here. Um, is the restore find object preload images? That's actually pretty cool. So, and restore, maybe we should take all of this and sort of just break down what is it doing. Let's take a look here. All right, so the swap image is the big one that we have here. So let's break down uh, what exactly is going on. Uh, and so we've got this right here, which is our variable declarations. This used to be like a, a pretty common way to declare variables where you would just declare them all at the top of your function or your document or whatever scope you're working in, you would declare it. So we have a, an I, a J, maybe we should var, we have an X, an A, and that's it. So now we have mm swap image dot arguments mm swap image dot arguments let's take a look what is mm swap image dot arguments no oh you know it's probably the the arguments object but why would it why would it let's let's try change it so we'll go in here and i think we just edit this sucker here, let's let's clean this up here and click that button here. Here we go. Uh, and then I think I can type some code in here. Is it not letting me, uh, it doesn't let me edit it because I think it's in the index, the HTML. Oh, let, let's let's put that eyes for a second. So um, we've got this, which is creating a new array MMSR. It's sort of a, that's a blank array. Let's comment that up. It's probably now people just say equals square bracket. Um, then there is a loop here that is looping over all of the a, which is the arguments my uh, minus two, um, and then looping over every three. Okay. Um, then it, it checks to see if the X is equal to macromedia find object arguments of I. So if they find something that is equal to that argument, it doesn't equal null. So that's kind of a, I don't think we would do that anywhere. You just check for it, but you can check if it doesn't equal null. Sure. Um, then 
take the Macromedia SR. What is MMSR? Let's check in the console here. It's an array of probably source images, other merch. So if I hover over CD packaging and out and run that again, let's grab the first thing. Tabs underscore C. Okay, so this MMSR is just a global variable. I think that's the white version. So I think what they're doing here is they have a global variable where they just stick the, the actual image of this. And I'm assuming it's probably an array because I'm, I'm assuming that this MM swap image has the ability to handle active states as well. Uh, so got that. Then they check if X dot original source, if there is no original, what is X? X is what they found. Okay. So they, they search in here and they find that, um, if it doesn't have an original source. Ooh, okay. I see. So I think they've, they put a property on this image tag. So if I select this image tag right here, uh, oh, yeah. Hey, hey, look at that. So what it does is it just puts a property on the image called O source or original source. So if there is no original source, the original source is equal to the current source. Um, and then the source is equal to a, the argument. And then it, and then it, and then it's going to take in the second argument of this thing. So let's take a look here or the third argument plus two. So the first argument of MM swap images, there we go. Tab CDs over. So it's, it's, it's replacing the source of that image with the tab CDs over. Okay. I see. All right. So, uh, this is just a way to loop over the arguments that have been passed in. I'm not sure why it's a like maybe the MM swap image does a bunch of stuff. It loops over all of them. And if it can find it, it, it sets the source to be the over state. Um, and then also serves as a reference to remember the old state. And then I'm assuming the MM swap image restore is similar to that where, yeah, it will loop over the arguments again. Um, but restore it. See the X dot source, the image dot source is equal to the original image source. That's pretty cool. Um, and then what else do we have here? The MM preload images D equals document. All right. That's, that's pretty simple. So what it does is, um, document.images Oh man, it's taking all of the document images it makes a new a new global array of all of the images and then for a is equal to mm preloaded image dot arguments. So maybe there is preloaded. Ah, I see. So when, when this thing loads, the body loads, it's, it's loaded up with all of the things, all the images that it needs to actually, uh, load up. So it's not going to preload every image on the page. Um, I think it's, it will just check if that is an actual image in the document. Um, and then it'll go ahead and create a new image. That's how you create an image programmatically in JavaScript and loop over each of those and set the source to be whatever it is. And, and simply by doing that, that will trigger, um, the network requests off to that. And, and then that way, when you hover over all of these things, you don't get that split second um, where the, the image isn't reloaded. So that is, some. Um, woo, I like, it's amazing how, how simple that is. Now you could do almost, you could do all of that with CSS 
obviously you just do text now, but if it was an image, you still could swap it out with, with text and, and even preloading it. There's some tricks you could just preload it with, with some CSS, or you could just not use images at all. So I don't know if that's interesting or not, but I thought that was kind of cool just to dig into JavaScript that was probably written like that was probably written. I don't know, probably 15 years ago. Um, it's kind of cool to see that was probably pretty revolutionary at the time. And now, um, it seems like a bit silly to do it that way. <laughs> All right. Hope you enjoyed that. Talk to you later.